Hey guys, welcome to this small tutorial about how to use Gpattern on Foliage. Uh, so in this tutorial we're covering up uh, how to make a simple pine tree uh, where instead of using the normal leaf texture we're going to replace the um, leaf planes with a 3D mesh and that's where uh, geopattern comes handy. Uh, geopattern, first of all, what is that? It's not a scattering tool, but it's more like a um, spatial array tool. It takes one base surface and one 3D pattern. And according to the UVW mapping of the base surface, it makes a sort of spatial array of the 3D pattern mesh. Here you can see I have uh, created a common pine tree and when you create this kind of stuff you usually have one single mesh which is made of different IDs. First thing I want to, to do is to separate uh, the meshes according to the IDs. In this case I can see that I have a bunch of IDs. We can see I have the leaves on the ID number 2 and the bark on the ID number 1. Let's start by detaching the needles and let's call them needles. Since I have to make some tests before applying the Gpattern modifier to the whole mesh, I'm going to take some of them and detach them in a smaller amount so that it won't be too much weight on the memory and performance until we find the good settings for Gpattern. Let's see how to replace these planes with 3D needles. We said before that the pattern in order to work requires UVW coordinates written in the base surface. In this case, when you generate trees, the UVW coordinates of each leaf is already written in the plane, so that goes pretty well for us. Okay, so let's now see what happens if I launch a small random. We have a tree made of planes. Let's now create the needle that we need to uh, replace the planes with. In my case I want to achieve, I want to create some mesh that looks like this one so it's pretty simple it's made of a stick and other smaller sticks scattered around and to do that I'm going to use a forest pack I'm going to create a new forest pack object apply that to the main branch and then going into the option I'm going to use uh, these two branches that I easily modeled in 3ds Max with a small band noise modifier effect pretty simple. Let's choose the first object to be scattered which is this small needle here and let's of course we don't see it because we are working in a very small scale so let's um, go into the distribution tab let's place ourselves in the full kind of distribution and decrease the units until we see something happening let's 60. Okay, now what I see is the 
way too big so we're going to scale them down uniformly uh, let's go into my distribution object and set up global scale of 40 for example then we need to fix the distribution style and in order to do that we're going to the surface tab and use forest packing in UV mode uh, so that's way more orthogonal to the surface let's use the normal kind of distribution Let's add some uh, random angles. So let's go to transformation. Let's set up some scale, some rotation, and let's find the nice parameters to to make it look more natural. So let's introduce maybe some slight rotation, something like that. Maybe some random rotation here. Yep. That's pretty okay. Uh, now, as for the materials, uh, I've made some very basic uh, materials for the um, grain needle. I've used a um, standard F store material with a green kind of diffuse texture mix them together in a um, store mix node in a bunch of variations that I achieved using the color correction tool this one is more yellowish, this one is more greenish joined together with a um, AppStorm random color set up on object and element ID so it can create some subtle variation to the color of each needle <laughs> uh, then the same texture goes into the glossiness this one is not actually needed and as for the bark it's a uh, simple texture I found on the internet so the result is that our needle look like something like this which goes pretty pretty fine yep looks good once we have finished making creating the, the scattering with Forest Pro and our base pattern we're going to select it and convert it to editable mesh then we're going to duplicate them so we make a backup copy and we will attach them together because your pattern works only with one single mesh so simply attach them together now take my base your pattern mesh and let's try to apply that to our leaf planes select those ones and apply a F storm to a pattern and we're going to choose our geometry to be duplicated which is here then we're going to use the fit in object space to get the um, crop box fit 
Okay, let's see what happens. Since the mapping coordinates are already written in each plane, we should see the results right away. Yep. Works pretty pretty well. As you can see, our mesh has replaced each of the planes with the AppStorm GeoPattern modifier. By default, uh, GeoPattern is set up at 100% height. You have to um, fix this value according to your results because many times it's not okay to leave it at 100% and that's why I detached a small portion of planes before testing the Jeep pattern. Uh, so let's find a good pattern height. And I think that 3 or 2.5 was kind of okay. Now well, let's scale down. Yep. What we're going to do now is simply attaching this mesh back to the whole um, leaf planes. And so we're going to the table mesh layer and attach everything up. It should work by now. Let's test it. As you can see we have achieved a pine tree that is looking decently even on close-ups. Let's turn off the environment for a second to see the shape of the tree which is pretty okay. And that's it guys. Um, that's what the pattern can be used for. Hope this small tutorial was useful to you and uh, have a nice day.